The law of inertia is very intuitive. It's always fun to do some quick demos. Uh, here's a simple demo of the law of inertia. Here's a, a jar and a little object, and I'm going to lay the object on top of a card. The object is at rest. And I'm arguing that in the absence of force, an object at rest will stay at rest. So what happens if I flick the card out of the way? Well, it's not going to float there because there's a force of gravity pulling it down. But on the other hand, if I flick the card fast, as long as there's not much friction and there's not, there's not going to be any important force in this direction. No force, according to Newton's, means there will be no change in motion in this direction. So it started off at rest horizontally. It will still be at rest. It should plunk down into this jar. Sure enough. Let's do another demo. These are just so much fun, I can't resist. Nice tablecloth setting here, little dishes, some flowers on the table. Here's a, a classic uh, trick. Try this at home at your own risk. Objects at rest remain at rest as long as there's no net force on them. There's a tiny force here of friction between the tablecloth and the objects, but fundamentally demonstration of Inertia. Inertia is the word that describes the fact that objects like to continue doing what they were doing. When a person has inertia, you mean that it's hard to change them. And that's what Newton's first law is telling us, is that if you don't push on something, then it's not going to change its motion. This is uh, correct, and uh, sometimes people just can't believe it. You think, no, objects in motion want to come to a halt. Here's another example where people sometimes have a hard time believing it. Just got a little metal ring here and a marble. I'm going to put the marble along the edge and roll it. So it's going to roll all by itself along this circular hoop. And the question is, what will it do when it reaches the, the edge here? A lot of people have a sense, you know, Newton's first law, when we wrote it in our inarticulate way, and we said, it maintains uniform motion. So some people might argue, well, gee, uniform motion, it's running around in a circle. Won't it keep running around in a circle? So it will kind of loop around, and maybe it'll just keep going in a circle, or maybe it'll kind of arc away. That's an intuition that a lot of people have, but it's just not right. Newton's law says it will maintain straight line motion with constant speed. So that's what we should see. And uh, let's just watch. Try it again, moves fast. As soon as it leaves, it travels in a straight line with constant speed. And everything does that as long as there's no net force. So as long as there's no friction on the table to worry about. I need to make one little caveat here. Uh, what I've been saying is true in inertial reference frames. An inertial reference frame is a reference frame that's sitting still or moving with a uniform velocity. If you're in a rocket ship that's accelerating upwards, or even if you're in an airplane that's experiencing lots of um, uh, turbulence and it's jerking up and down, Newton's first law will appear not to hold. When you're in an airplane and you're sitting eating your lunch and there's something in the table, all of a sudden, you know, it jumps, flies out of the table. That's a clear violation of Newton's first law. An object at rest spontaneously comes into motion. That's because you're not in an, an inertial reference frame if your reference frame is accelerating or jerking around. The idea that objects want to come to a rest is an old one. It's deeply ingrained in a lot of people's intuition. It was first articulated clearly thousands of years ago by Aristotle, a Greek philosopher. And he said, objects want to head towards rest. And he was wrong. <laughs> Galileo and Newton really made perhaps the most significant discovery of modern physics. It really led us to our ability to describe and understand all motions. Anything. It can be any system, simple, complicated, moving fast, moving slow. This idea, the prime idea is that if there is a force, then the motion will change. And Newton's first law says a corollary of that. It's the starting point. If there's no force, the motion won't change. You know, if you insist that Aristotle's right and objects tend to want to slow down, I call that your, your closet Aristotelian. And uh, I, 
I know I even have a little bit of that in me because we've got lots of world experience where friction is just so deeply ingrained that we can't forget about it. If you want to become a master at some sport, if you want to drive a sports car, if you want to understand or, for that matter, design a rocket that's going to travel through interplanetary space, you must understand Newton's law. So Voyager, the example that we started with, it's an object out in deep space. It's experiencing no forces of any significance whatsoever. Why does it continue moving at huge speeds, 30,000 miles, some, something like that, 30,000 miles an hour? Why doesn't it slow down? Newton's first law, an object in motion remains in motion. How about the golf ball? Well, that was an object in motion remaining in motion until it got whacked by the golf club. So what we've got to talk about next is what happens when you do apply a force. And what we're going to see is it changes the motion.